Hi everyone, I'm Tech Bob, and welcome to eTech Facebook Live Fridays. Today we're going to be showing the FPC replacement on a Galaxy A42. This process is pretty much general for any FPC repair, whether it be a, an iPhone, a Samsung device, an iPad. It's generally going to be the same thing. Um, one qu quick second while I check the audio. Okay, looks like we're good. Just making sure everything was good on the streaming side. Um, before Hector starts this, I wanted to talk about the main cause of this because you'll typically not have a customer come in off the street saying, hey, I broke a connector on my phone unless they're trying to DIY or repair themselves. This is typically going to be tech damage or shop damage. And it happens one of two ways. The first one is when you're taking the device apart, if whatever tool you're, you're using, you're either too rough with it or you go too deep. Um, a spudger or tweezers or even a flathead screwdriver I've seen. Um, those are easy tools to dig too deep. And you can see in the, the top edge of the screen, we have, that's the actual logic board. Hector can kind of point it out. That's the actual connector on the logic board. What it looks like happened is the, uh, well, in this case, if it was just a connector like that, that would be a heavy pry damage from the bottom. But if you look at the bottom most part of the screen, that's actually the flex cable that connects to that connector. It looks like the second damage case happened where the technician didn't align the cable properly and use excessive force to press it down. It actually broke off that whole bottom edge of the connector on the board and it kept it on the, the display flex or the, the flex cable that goes to the display. So again, just two ways you can damage it. Both involve excessive force. So if you avoid that, you should never have this happen. Um, and the rest of this is gonna show again how to do the repair. This is definitely a higher level thing. And if you get something like this down, you can definitely offer support to other repair shops in the area as this does help you having to prevent full replacement of a, of a device. So with that being said, Hector's gonna switch over to start replacing it. Our first step in this process is to remove the remainder of the old connector. And that's going to involve desoldering it. Um, so Hector's gonna switch over a little bit. He's putting the board in a vise, so he's adjusting that right now. That's going to help hold the board still while he heats it. With all micro soldering, you, I'm sure you've seen some of our other streams where you end up wishing you had uh, another set of hands to, to hold something else, like whether it be the board or the heat gun or tweezers. So the board holder really helps with that. That's going to keep the board still while we uh, heat and use tweezers with our two hands. There you go. You're in frame, Hector. All right, so first up, he's gonna apply flux around the connector. Uh, flux helps with melting the solder quicker. It prevents oxidation, which in turn melts the solder easier. If you don't use flux, you're gonna end up sitting there with the heat gun for longer. And the name of the game, whenever you're doing a type of repair with a hotter rework station, is minimizing the amount of heat and the time of heat on the board. Because even though you're pointing the heat gun at just this spot, that residual heat starts to spread and if it spreads to components enough, it can cause them to melt and you're taking things off the board or loosening them that you don't want to. Um, so now that he has the flux there, he has his heat gun on. We're doing 380 degrees Celsius and 50 for the airflow. Uh, these are two important settings as well. Uh, if you have your heat too high, again, it can cause damage. If you have it too low, it's not going to heat up enough to melt the solder. And then airflow, you don't want it too high because that flow can actually blow things off the board. So... Uh, 380 and 50 are uh, perfect set settings here. Now what he's doing is heating the connector while he's kind of tapping it with the tweezers on the end. When the connector is ready to come off, it's basically going to float on its own. You never have to really rip it off the board or pull it off the board. It involves very minor uh, movement. <clears throat> so you can see how there it's kind of moving on that side. And it, if you didn't notice, the motion he's using, he's kind of going up and down the connector evenly, and it just slides off. If you don't have that movement like Hector just showed where you move the heat gun along the entire length of the connector, what you're going to end up with is you'll pull part of the connector off, but the rest will stay stuck on there. So you want constant movement there. He's going to apply a little bit more flux. And now the second step of this process, so we just did removal is to clean the old solder that's on the board and put some new solder on there. So he's gonna take the uh, flat tip of his iron 
kind of touch each of those pads. Add a little bit of solder in there as he goes. And here, definitely, I would say less is more. You don't want to apply a ton because if you apply too much, you're either going to end up with solder bridges where pads are touching that aren't supposed to, or you're going to end up with clumps of solder and it's not going to let the connector sit down flat. Now he's taking the, the desolder braid is underneath the iron. It's made of a copper wire, which helps absorb solder. So he's basically sucking up all that solder. And the reason he applied new solder is the new solder has a lower tendency to, or a higher tendency to melt lower temperature. So it's easier to help suck up the old solder now with new solder on there. And you can't hear what he was doing over there, but what he was doing is getting alcohol on a, a cotton swab or just a Q-tip. You can use a brush for this step, but we find Q-tips do a better job of really cleaning the board. So he's just getting everything off that's that was on there, that's the flux, solder residue, um, just to prep it for the next step here. And now he's taking tweezers and he's actually gonna be using solder paste. This is where everyone has their own kind of technique. You can use solder, you can use alloy, you can use solder paste. The reason we prefer solder paste is it has a lower melting temperature. So you're not having to apply as much heat to get it to melt and it still has a good amount of strength to where that connector won't come up on its own if you connect and disconnect the uh the flex cable that goes there and the way solder paste works is if you magnify this even more what you would see is that there's a lot of really really small solder balls in that paste and it's mixed with flux so it's basically a combination of the two and you see as he's running the iron that solder paste basically just gets sucked up to the pads. That's another reason we use solder paste. It has a tendency to go straight to the pads and it doesn't cause bridging. So it's easier to melt, easier to apply and less issues overall. So that's why solder paste is definitely our way to go here. And again, just a quick cleanup. And then before we put the new connector on, just a final layer of flux. There are technicians out there that will just use the same flux the whole time, which again, there's nothing right or wrong about that. And just our opinion, if you keep cleaning throughout the process, it's just a better overall end look of the repair and just overall end result. So we do recommend cleaning in between each step. It keeps your work looking good. And if you are streaming repairs or doing any type of content, you definitely want to do it on this side versus having a mess everywhere and at the end even though it works it doesn't look the best uh our goal is to make it look as oem as possible which is why we clean so often in the process and there we have our new connector and this connector actually is cross compatible uh for a couple a series devices and you'll find that with a lot of devices some use the same connector for the digitizer or the lcd or the charging port so you don't usually have to stock a whole lot on the connector side to be able to repair a variety of devices. All right, so now that he has the connector aligned, and what he did was kind of just tapped it on each end with the tweezers. And it may not be 100% perfect right here, but while he heats it, what happens is the solder has a tendency to naturally grab onto those pins that are on the connector. So you, it's... 100% normal to actually see the connector move during this process. It'll kind of reposition itself. And all you really need during this is a quick tap of your tweezers. You should really never have to grab the connector at this point because too much interaction with the connector would actually be bad. You end up doing more harm than good since you shift it one way or another. All right, Hector, and how do we know if it's good? There you go, that's what I was looking for. So the good old tap test basically just means that you are taking your tweezers and you're tapping on the, um, the pins. So one, you're making sure the connector is structurally attached to the board. And then two, you see how he's touching the tweezers individually to those pins, it's, possible and especially when you're starting out and you don't know how long to heat or you're figuring that out that 
certain pins may not be fully soldered. And you see, he actually switched over. That's an X-Acto blade. It has a finer point to it to where you can actually just pinpoint each of the pins. And he's making sure again that none of those pins are loose because what happens here, even if the connector looks like it's 100% solid on the board, if you go and connect that cable to this and it's not working still, it's most likely that one of those pins is off. This is typically gonna be the case if you do like a charging port or an HDMI port. If all of the pins that are on there aren't making full contact, aren't soldered, there's, there's a high likelihood it's not going to work. The other thing is it's very easy for it to stop working if say the pin is making contact but not fully soldered because it's only making a, a contact, it's not welded or soldered together. And again, he's just going down each pin and the process here to fix it, it's not a big deal if it does happen. All you would do is take your iron and then touch it to the pin just ever so slightly to where you can see that solder melt and it should sort of flow onto the pin and you've got everything good there. Hector, we good to go? Yeah. Cool, so all the pins are good. Um, at this point, final thing in the process is just a quick cleanup. You wanna make sure you take your uh, cotton swab again and some alcohol, clean up any residual flux. Flux is non-conductive, so it's not gonna cause any issues, but again, we want it as original as possible, so we're cleaning up any uh, flux, any materials like solder, solder paste that's on there, so you can't even tell we were there. And you can tell from the beginning of the video to now, it's a completely different look on the connector, and that's the entire process. Again, this one isn't necessarily a difficult one, depending on where the connector is. Where you really get into difficulty is if you have like a layered board, such as say the iPhone 10 or newer, and you're replacing an FPC where there's the under layer of the board, you really wanna watch your heat levels because it's very, very easy to overheat a board if you're not careful. Um, typical rule of thumb is you don't wanna heat for more than 60 seconds at a time for anything. If you heat it for 60 seconds and it's still not off, stop, let the board cool down and try it again. Um, some things that help with getting that off is apply a little bit more flux, um, but definitely don't just keep at it too much time in a row because that's where you end up with uh, popcorning is one of the, the common issues or what happens is the, the solder underneath ICs like the CPU or the NAND will bubble up from underneath the, the, the chip and things are either bridged or solder's not making full contact and now you have a non-working device. So um, again, just things to avoid, cautions if you do start doing this. Now, if you're interested in learning FPC repair, this is one of the courses we offer here at the facility. We do solder charging port training, backlight repair, FPC repair, as I mentioned, isn't a common one, as common, but say you are trying to become a support for shops in your area, this is one to have in your toolbox because it is a common issue that does happen. I would say connectors are starting to be built a little more securely, but in some devices, we've, we've seen a lot on the, the newer like S21 devices and then the A series. It's all it's not 100% gonna be a, a tech damage issue. Sometimes the manufacturers don't just don't solder these connector on the best or the quality of solder isn't great. So it doesn't provide that hold that you really need to prevent that type of issue from happening. Um, let me see, uh, we had a comment saying, what percentage of the time will you need to re-solder because pins are not connected correctly? I would say it's fairly low, um, it's, and it gets lower the, the more you have practice with doing the repair. Starting out, I would say maybe 20% of the time, if that. So every 10 repairs, you may have two where you need to check the pins again. Um, but once you, you get the practice down, I don't think Hector really ever has to solder the pins anymore because he's got that, that flow down. And that's where practice, I would say, is the number one thing to do to try to get good at this repair because if you don't practice it and you just do customer devices live, there's a chance you may overheat a board or, again, cause other damage uh, with components around it. Um, but great question there. Again, if there's any other comments or questions, if you see this video after the fact, Feel free to drop comments in there. We always go back through and look at the videos to see if anyone has any questions. But that's all we had on this topic for today. A couple just uh, news-related items. Uh, one, as a reminder, the Gadget Repair Expo is coming up. It's October 13th and 14th in San Antonio. If you have not already, make sure you get your ticket. Our coupon code is still live. It's WORKS50, so that's W-E-R-X-50 to get the ticket for half off. 
Um, a lot of good things lined up in this event. We're doing a workshop on lasers and back glass replacement. I know there's been some questions that have come up recently with the iPhone 14s coming out and are lasers still going to be used or not. We'll definitely cover that point. We, we feel that there's no issues in sight, um, seeing as they didn't change the design completely. Um, and then there's also a, lots of things on sales and inventory management and credit. Again, if you're a repair shop that needs just new services or you're, you've been struggling in the last year and you're trying to find other things to improve your business, this is the one to go to because the cost is fairly low. And especially if you're central to the Texas area, I mean, San Antonio from us is about four and a half, five hours, and it's pretty much the same for most of the major cities in Texas. So we hope to see everyone there. And if you come by the booth, make sure to say hi. I'm sure we've talked to a lot of you uh, on the phone or through email or chat over the years, and we definitely love to, to meet in person. So again, a hundred reasons to go, not many reasons not to go. So make sure you, you do check out the event. Um, final thing for our Facebook Live next week, we don't have anything locked in just yet. We have a new toolkit on the Chromebook side that we've been, meaning, um, we've been meaning to debut on the live, so it may be that. But if you have another repair thing that, say, you've had issues with, like, say, opening a phone, we've covered, like, I opening the iPhone 12s before, or, say, like, doing a battery replacement, anything you can think of that you've struggled with or, hey, it would be good to have a video on, let us know. We'd be more than happy to cover that on our next live. But... That's all we have for today. I hope everyone enjoyed and everyone has a great weekend. We'll see everyone on next Friday's live.